It's time to introduce the next uh, uh, guest speaker for our SME session, Mr. Suresh Pereira, who is the business owner of uh, Solaire Solar Energy Systems and Component. I would like to give you all a brief introduction and background about Mr. Suresh. Um, he was born in um, Moratur and um, lived his childhood in Panadura. Uh, he has completed his primary education in St. Sebastian College in Moratur and later on uh, secondary education in St. Peter's College, Colombo. He has obtained his professional qualifications from Zimbabwe and also SIM, UK. He has started his career in um, 1991 as an assistant sales manager of Gordon Fraser Company, which, is, which was a subsidiary of uh, John Kills Holding. So one and a half years into that, he was recruited by a principal company based in Australia to develop the Middle Eastern market base and to be based in Cyprus. So after completing one year in Cyprus, he has moved to Dubai and um, UAE, in 1994, he started his employment with Majid al Futen, who was the distributor for the same product in UAE, and worked for the company for eight years. After the death of the son of uh, Majid al Futen, the department he was working under was uh, moved under a different leadership, which was the triggering point at his uh, new venture. So without going into more detail, I would call upon Mr. Suresh, who is here to address us, and let us know his story, uh, his success story, and take us through that. Mr. Suresh, over to you. Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and Professor. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to tell my story. I don't know if it's a long or short story, but it is interesting. Um, you, I can't remember the lady's name, but uh, she gave a brief of what I have, what I, how I started. I'll continue from where it was. And uh, after the unfortunate death of Mr. Majid al Two children, not one. Two children in probably a span of a year. Uh, we were given the option of, uh, if the company was transferred, which was called Mass Telecom, it was transferred to this, the son who was controlling that company, his good friend. And we were given the option of uh, deciding whether we want to continue with it or whether to break off. And uh, we took the I was given the option of whether I want to take over the control of the company and run the business. And uh, that all came because if I go back again from John Keels, I was recruited by the company I was representing, which was an Australian company. They gave me the opportunity to come to uh, Cyprus because of the relationship, the business development, or whatever that I had. I was fortunate enough to get that opportunity. And then, when this break came, when the choice of deciding whether uh, we are continuing with the new owners or whether we are going to separate, then the company again came up and said, OK, they will back me up if I want to start on your own. And that is how I decided, OK, let me move a step ahead and start on my own. And that's how Solar Solar Energy started. Uh, at that time when I started, of course, I did not have a capital. It was very little, which could probably survive. I could maybe survive. I could bring the equipment, because the equipment that I deal with is quite extensive in pricing. And uh, again, the companies that I worked with, the principal stepped in and they said, no problem. We will fund the projects for you and then continue with it. And uh, that's how I started developing. Initially, when I started, it was me and another two gentlemen who started because we didn't have much uh, uh, you know, manpower or the finances to develop the manpower. So, I had to do the financing, the accounting, I had to do the sales, I had to do the uh, office administration uh, along with my other colleague. 
then the installation of the equipment we have to do it, plus we have to do the servicing of the equipment. So all that area had to be covered. And yes, it was tough. But I am happy that I did it because today nobody can tell me in my company that this particular thing cannot be done because I have done it. They cannot tell me that the installation cannot be done. They cannot tell me that the sales cannot be done. They cannot tell me that uh, the um, uh, accounting cannot be done in a particular way. Maybe I'm not doing the proper accounting or the professional accounting as a you know, proper accounting person would do. But I have now got an accountant and financial controller who will do the business. But they cannot tell me that this cannot be done because I have done it. Uh, at that time, yes, we started with two people, and again, there were a lot of my clients who are who still I associate with and have a relationship with 22 years later. Because when I started in 94, it was almost 22, so those clients still come with me and have been given, were giving me business and were giving, supporting me and uh, developed into a level where now I have about 18 staff, 18 to 20 staff. Of course, now I'm too old, I don't go to sites for installation, I go occasionally. But uh, the sales I do with my own, I still service my old clients who, who have who supported me before. And uh, counts, I have a separate team. But in all that, one thing that I would say that is, uh, okay, I can tell that it was a little bit of luck, but it was mainly, I would always tell that it was the professional approach and which I always maintain the service, the relationship with the clients, and the um, uh, honesty that you develop with your uh, partners and your clients. I have always maintained it, and that is one of my primary um, uh, instruction to all my staff, that the service to the client, no matter what, even if you lose the business, maintain that service. Even if you lose money, it may lose, we may lose, uh, do the project at a loss. But I will still have that client because the client knows we have service to <coughs> And the, the reason that all my suppliers have stuck with me and have been supporting me over the period of 20 odd years is because we have had so much of a good relationship and an honest relationship. Honesty is primary. And in between, I had a uh, personal tragedy in my life, which uh, in 2002, soon after moving from Majid al Futem, one of my, my youngest son fell uh, extremely sick. And I had to devote my time towards him. He had to undergo some uh, treatment. And uh, that took about two, two and a half years. And unfortunately, I lost him. But uh, within that period, I had, I also, I mean, I knew I wouldn't be able to run the business. I had to choose whether I was going to do my business or my son's treatment. And I gave the option to all my suppliers, uh, including some of my staff, saying, if you want, you have to find another job. And my suppliers, if they want, they could find another agent. And thank God, maybe because of the honest relationship I had, all of them said, no, we will wait for you. You do your treatment, and then you come back, we will stick with you. And all of them have been sticking with me and working with me. Maybe they see something good in me, I don't know. But that is a very important thing I need to tell because that is how I have developed myself. And 2006, or 2000, yeah, 2006, I lost him. And uh, again, I had decided that, no, enough is enough. I'm going back, going back and I'll do something in Sri Lanka. But uh, I kept, I told my customers, and uh, two particular customers in, in particular. One, he was, uh, he's still, I mean, he's a, he's a retired uh, colonel in the brigadier in the army in the UAE Defense Forces, who is, whom I have known for 
since 1993. Was a customer and then became a friend. And the other person is the father of the present current uh, economic minister, His Highness Sultan Nasser Mansuri, his father. Said bin Nasser Mansuri is about 85, 86 years old now. So my first customer. When I told both of them, they said, look, you have a choice. What you have lost, yes, we have also lost. I mean, later on I realized that when they told their personal story, they also have had certain tragedies in their family. I'm sure most of us have had. If you look at the current situation in the country, I just called my father two days ago and he said, look, one of my sister's good friends, whole family got my from. So everybody has a tragedy in some way or the other. But it's how we go and move on from there onwards. He said, look, you have two options. Both of them said, you can go back and do something. If you have a business where you can, the same opportunity to continue, you can do it up. Or you have something which you have developed. Let us help you out. Let us, you know, support you. And you carry on so that you, I have, of course, I have two more children to support them. And that is when I decided, okay, let me stay back and start again. And uh, it was actually from 2008 that I started really <coughs> moving the business and uh, developing it. And uh, this came up to have come up to this level. But in all all of those which I have uh, come across is the that I mean I don't need to tell you all you all you all maybe already aware of it. If whatever you do in whatever um, uh, uh, profession or field you are in, always give you a hundred percent. You cannot go wrong. Always be honest to yourself. If you be honest to yourself, you will always be honest to your job and to your profession. It automatically comes. And do things according to your heart, which will, it, your mind will tell you whether you are doing something correct, whether you are doing something wrong. These three things I have always followed. And I have always told my company, do this. And that is what we have been sort of uh, developing. Of course, coming to my business side, we try to promote uh, green energy in terms of uh, let it be solar, heat recovery, waste heat recovery, or any of those kind of uh, facility uh, equipment. So we do the development of the product. We do the design and we do installation of the systems and of course the last part is the servicing which we do. Now I I tend to choose my projects because I prefer to do a complete design of the system and have that satisfaction that I have done something unique. So most of my projects are not copy paste of each of the projects, it is a different design and I try to improve it or improve on the system to with the mind of giving a better solution to the customer. So that is how we always try to uh, do the uh, development of the system and the marketing of the products. Uh, I've been here for 20, overall for 22 years, uh, from 1994. For a brief, I was in Cyprus for one year. And I have two kids, with the one that I lost is three. Uh, the eldest, uh, I mean, I just graduated about three years ago from uh, Washington State University, he's a mechanical engineer, and now attached to Mass Innovations as a uh, robotics engineer. Uh, the second one, again, graduated from the same university. He wanted to follow the brother. He's also a mechanical engineer. And uh, he's going back this August for his uh, postgraduate master's. And he decided to go with energy. Not green energy, but nuclear, thermal, and hydro energy. I don't know why he chose that, but he 
selected that section. Uh, my wife was an accountant, but uh, she's now a housewife. She has been always a housewife uh, since we got married and had the first kid, she decided to leave the job. And uh, I've been looking after the kids. So she has been the, I mean, the main backbone of the family where she's been running the, I mean, keeping the kids together and uh, educating them, giving their discipline. I've been here most of the time. They were here for a short period of time, but uh, went back to Sri Lanka because no offense with the educational system here, but uh, in my opinion, I thought it was always better to have a Sri Lankan educational system. And when I say education, it's not only, I don't look at the education in terms of the paper qualification you get. It's also the association you have with people, with the society. In Sri Lanka, you meet a drug dealer's child in your school, maybe, the poor person's child, the, the most richest person's child, the average child. You, If you go in the bus, you may associate everybody. And that is part, should be part of your life as well. I'm not saying that you should send your children back, but this was my personal choice. And um, according to what I feel, yes, I have lost their childhood to a certain extent, yes. But uh, I put their primary uh, well-being and decided with my wife that this was the best choice to do. And um, then I asked them, they said, yeah, what we have done is good. And that's why even after graduating from, Sri, uh, from US, they got job opportunities, but they said, no, we're going back to Sri Lanka and going back to the roots and they're working there. So this is my probably short story of how I have come. And uh, if there are any questions or anything that I would like to give me, answer I did. Yeah, we'll open it up uh, to our Learning partners, any questions? Anyone have? Maybe I'll start off. Um, um, that's not what I meant. The <laughs> question. Um, in terms of, uh, like, you know, um, you have had a very um, long journey and, and having had uh, personal challenges as well. So when it, when it comes to starting this uh, business and, and having a very strong relationship with the uh, suppliers and, and succeeding, so anything um, difficult when it came to managing your business when it's starting up? Any, any uh, examples you could share with us? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, no business will be, a startup business will uh, not have challenges in terms of financial and uh, Wise. Yes, I had a lot of challenges. There were months where I had to, you know, withdraw from okay, cash from my credit card to pay the salaries. But I always paid the salaries because I believe when I was working, when I was working for John Tess, I'm always proud of it. And when I was working for Madrid Africa, I always been proud of it. We used to get the salary before the end of the month. By the 25th, we used to get the salary. At that time, Ken Barland was the chairman of the company. And I always try to, I was always proud of it. And I make it to be proud that my people, my staff could tell the same thing. So I always, from the day I started, I always made sure that before the end of the month, we got the salary. So it was a challenge. I used to withdraw from my credit card and pay. I paid finance charges and various things. But I made it a point when I started my business that I would never, I will always try not to take a bad loan. No offense to any bankers here. But the, my uh, evaluation of the economics was that here if you take a bank loan, you pay 20%, 22% straight down on interest. 
Now you make 22% interest, you have to have your profit, gross profit, 22% plus, just to break even. And if you look at it that way, to make a net profit, you have 22% plus your overheads, which is maybe 15, 17%, get up to 35, 40%. That is only to break even without having a loss in the long term. And at that, if you try to sell a product, any product, you're out of the market. So I always have tried to manage myself without any bank loan. And so far, thank God, I have been able to succeed with it. And today I buy my equipment, paying, them, paying all my suppliers 100% in cash. I mean, cash means transfer in PT. I pay my local suppliers everybody. So I am proud today, if, though I am a small business, companies like Barville International, which is one of the biggest shipping companies here. If I tell them today, I need a shipment cleared, I will get it cleared. Because they know they get their payment on time or before time. If I tell my supplier today in US or in uh, Germany or in Italy, though I have been working with them for 22 years, if I tell them I need the equipment immediately, all of the projects will be stopped and my equipment will disappear because they know they get their cash. I mean, as a business person, that is what you need. You need the assurance that you will be paid back. So, and you serve the, those customers better if you get paid. So I work it in that way. The same way with my customers, if they are good paymasters with me, I make sure that they are into, I decategorize our sub, uh, customers into A, B, C categories. A being the top people, and B being the okay, the delayed payments, and C being unreliable. So we categorize them and then accordingly service them. So I'm not sure whether I answered your question no, you did. properly. Yes. yes, thank you. Any, any questions? I guess I'll go for the next question. Now, in terms of uh, when you started off the business, the triggering point was where you had uncertainty. But when you move in here and, and now um, after so many years in, in the operation, so when you look back, how uh, how satisfied are you or like where you had um, the target you had in mind versus where you are right now? How do you feel about uh, your achievements? Uh, achievements, okay, you could always do a little bit better. But I have always tried to achieve my targets, which I have set, set upon. Um, and that ability also came along with, and that we don't know what our capabilities are. All of us are equal, and all of us have a tremendous amount of capability. It's only that we don't trigger it, and we don't know our capabilities. And I knew my capability with the unfortunate incident of me having, I mean, my younger son falling sick. At that time, I, he went to Australia for some treatment, and it was very expensive. It was unbelievable. I mean, there were times that I could, you know, for the treatment, my wife calls him and says, look, my wife was with him almost one and a half years. And my other two children with my grandmother, my, with my parents, in Sri Lanka, they need, they, they need also care and they need say, certain uh, requirements. And my wife used to call me and say, look, I need money because they need to do this treatment and I don't have it. And I, that is the time I decided, okay, let me, you know, see how I could work it out. And I did sales in such a way that I even if you ask me how I did it, I don't know. I cannot tell you how. But I didn't do anything legal. I can tell you that. But I got the money to finance my son's treatment. And today if you ask me, yes, I can do certain things. That triggered me and then now if I look back, I know if I put my mind into something, I can achieve it. I can achieve it and I can do it. 
and that is why we also, being a such a small company, we had the opportunity of with my American company, the partners, we did the design for the airport, the Dubai Airport Terminal 3, for the air conditioning heat recovery system. And they executed, of course, I did not have that kind of uh, finances to fund that project. So it was funded directly by the factory. They did it, and of course, they gave me the commission that I had. It was required. So that kind of project, I mean, I wouldn't be even involved in it unless I had some kind of a, you know, uh, professional approach or some triggering point where they saw that there was something different in my company and the equipment we supply. And today we are also negotiating with uh, the Sri Lanka government to do a project there. And uh, it would be probably announced in the couple, next couple of uh, probably next couple of months, which would be also quite a sizable project. So all those have come because of the uh, yes, there is a little bit of luck. Yes, always there is luck in it. Uh, but the hard work that I believe we have put as a team, not only me, but whole company, including the suppliers. Hard work pays off. Yeah, it always pays. That's why I always say, you have to put your hundred percent. It doesn't matter. Everybody cannot be a uh, winner. There will be winners, there will be losers. But if you, in your heart, if you know that you have put your hundred percent, you cannot fail. You will have rough times, you will have hard times, but it is impossible that you can fail. Your story is uh, in, in interesting and inspiring one. You have gone through a lot of uh, challenges personally and professionally as well. And uh, a key message which you said is to give you 100% commitment. So based on your experience, anything additional you think you could share with us um, in terms of being a, a small business entrepreneur, coming up as a leader and, and currently running a successful business? Uh, anyone, I mean, I always encourage people to start up their own be their own boss. I always encourage it. Even my technician, I say, look, start something. You are your own boss. Because if you earn even a 50 rupees or 50 dirhams, you are happy that you have earned it because of your hard and your sweat, your ability. But I'm not saying that you should all check up and start your own thing. No. But uh, that is how my personal opinion is. View. And uh, if you do that, if you start your own business or if you start your own, even if you ask uh, team leaders or managers of a division, you have to be putting your hundred percent. And you, because the next person, especially if it is a company, I'm running a company. For the employees, they just okay. If I lose my business, they say thank you very much. You have been a good boss. Thank you very much. We are going back and they'll find some other job that works. But what am I going to do? I don't have anything to do. So you have to be 100% at it, especially when you are a small business. You have to know where your finances are going, and you have to have a control on where it goes and how it goes, not to cut corners and bring low quality equipment or low quality, no, that's not what I'm saying. The overall, you have to look at it and see, it may be better to put a Apple computer or a Sony or a thing, rather than buying a cheap Chinese computer and replace it 10 times. Because to replace it, you go 10 times, which means your labor, your manpower, your transportation, your time, all those are included. So at the, in the end, you lose the customer because he's unsatisfied, not satisfied. So always make sure that you put proper equipment in anything. Even if it is accounting, put a proper accounting package. Not that you have to go and maintain it uh, regularly. All will do that. So the finances is very important. The marketing side, yes, you have to make sure that the, your sales team, who you are appointed, bring results. And of course, to, for them to bring results, you have to have good products and you have to have the capability of the backing from your suppliers. Uh, 
and also the office generals, general office staff. Not that you have to be a Hitler or somebody with a gun pointing at each and everybody. No, you have to give them a little bit of freedom. Yes, I give my staff all the freedom. I say, look, you design your own way of working, but don't mess it up. You, because if I try to impose my system of working to you, you will not work. It's, it doesn't work because each one is unique, and. I try to take that uniqueness out of each one and to develop it. So I give them a freedom, but I tell them, look, don't misuse your freedom. You misuse your freedom, then I put the rules and regulations which you will not be able to adhere to. So give, give them freedom, but at the same time, monitor them. I know it's difficult, but you have to do that. Otherwise, within no time, before you know it, you have lost everything, and then get, back, get it back again, it's going to be. So looking back over your um, past, like you know, do you think at any point that you would have done things differently? But looking at it now, after many years into um, operation, maybe at, at the point of starting or, or how initial stages of the business? Mm, no, not. I wouldn't change anything that I would have done. Uh, of course, I would have had more, a little bit of more control. Not all my staff, but with one or two of them. And unfortunately, it happened to be Sri Lankans. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Ayodhya knows, who cheated and bent off. It doesn't matter. I mean, I always say, if I want to cheat you, you cannot stop it. There is no way you can stop it. If a thief wants to get into your house, you can put all the controls, he will get into your house, he will skip you. So that's what it is. So maybe I gave a little bit of more freedom, which I have heard a little bit now. But uh, apart from that, the way I have pro pro uh, done things, no, I wouldn't. The way I have operated the business or the way I have initially started the work, no, I wouldn't change it. I don't think I would uh, change any of that uh, systems. You, you briefly mentioned about Mr. Kenban and that. Yeah. Uh, so any other inspiration that you consider that you know uh, helped you? What is your basically, what's your inspiration? Uh, what, do you, what do you consider as your inspiration to be successful? That's my father. He's 86 years old. He was a telecommunication engineer. And from small days, what he told us was, even if you, in his own language, he said, if you just become a coolie and dig a drain, you dig it properly so that the water will flow through smoothly. Otherwise, it's a wastage to the water that you use, the wastage to the soil that you remove out of the ground, and a wastage to the water because you are going to create a stagnant water and you are going to create more uh, health hazards than what you have done. So in basic language, what he said is, if you do something, do it right, and then don't do it at all. So always, sometimes, if you speak to my family, they will say, sometimes they say, OK, can you do it? I say, no. Because I know I cannot do it. If she says, sometimes my wife says, can you cook? I cannot cook for coffee. So why should I do it? I said, no, I cannot. No, but you can do something. No, because I know I cannot do it right. Yes, it sometimes creates a, a, a problem, but then always do something to the best of your ability. So my father, yes, was, I mean, I would say he's always been the inspiration. Though he has not pushed me straight away as to, I'm always proud of him. And uh, if you speak to most of the telecommunication engineers who have been in this country, or even in Sri Lanka, if you mention my father's name, they will tell you. How he is. So he's always been there. And he has always said, call a spade a spade. If it is correct, you tell it is correct. If it is wrong, it's wrong. A right cannot be wrong and a wrong cannot be shown as a right. So yes, sometimes with that, sometimes people don't like it. When you say you're wrong, people don't like it. And I can help it. That's what I am. I am what I am. I don't try to portray something different from to anybody else of what I am. 
I always say I'm unique, you are also unique. Always never try to show what you cannot be. That's the whole problem with the universe, universe right now. They try to create imaginable, you know, uh, fascinating, uh, what you call, uh, portray different personalities, which you are not. So, Ken Balendra also was inspirational in terms of how I run my company now is based on how we used to run John Pierce at that time. And I can tell you, I'm sure you all would know, John Pierce in the 1990s was, I'm sure Professor would tell you, one of the best companies that you could ever work. Same thing I told them sometime ago. You yes. cannot imagine a company to work with that, and I'm proud to have worked with them at that time. My immediate boss was Elad Gunetalekar. I'm sure Professor would know him. Uh, he was one of the guys who, when they were playing all Ceylon, I think, who bowled Ted Dexter, the first ball. He was a best player. Oh, my immediate was fantastic gentleman. I still communicate with him. Of course, I can't communicate with him while he's raising a different level. But yes, he always gave the freedom to the people to do the business. Of course, he monitored it, yes. But with that, I mean, we used to love to go on, even on a Saturday to work. My wife asked me, why are you going on Saturday? Because we used to hang out and, I mean, that was, that is what I try to show. The office should be more for home. You should be eager to go to office than stay at home. I'm not saying that you have to fight with your wife and go to, no, not that. But you should be always eager to go to office. It's like school. You should be happy to go. And that's what I try to uh, implement. And the same way when I, I, maybe I was fortunate when I joined John uh, Majid Alpha thing, again the same type of attitude. Of course, I never met Majid Alpha thing himself. I met him when I visited his residence, but not personally. Uh, whereas Ken Ballard was different. We used to have uh, uh, John Peel's, what you call it, night, or John Peel's sports day, or something like that. And he used to come and he used to you know, sing all the dirty songs and, you know, have a beer. It's not the, it's not the um, being, you know, too free, but he was with the community. So that, yes, I try to implement it with my staff as well. We have, I mean, with my small staff, I always have a Christmas cake together. Or um, for, e, uh, for Ramadan, we have a, we go home for Iftar or something like that. And uh, for Christmas, you know, I make a hamper because these two, that is what I appreciated when I started, when I worked. So in my small way, I always try to do that. And those go a long way. It goes a long way. It's not the value of what you get, but the thought that matters. And yes, I, I impose some of those. In my business career, I use some of those which I experienced from John Pierce this way. And uh, up to date, like you might have uh, so many achievements and, and uh, happy moments, but um, a as a professional and a, and a uh, business owner, any key achievement which you think like you know made you um, feel realize or, or make you feel that you you want achieve where you want to be or what you wanted to do, any example that you could share with us? Okay. Uh when I started the solar business here, back in 1993, nobody was even bothered about it. Even in Sri Lanka, when we started in 1992, yes, it was there since 1978. When Sri Lanka had energy saving, uh, renewable energy since 1978, nobody knew about it. But uh, when we started it, I mean, if you look at my greater achievement and my looking back how capable it, the capabilities that I recognized in myself, when I started at John Gales, my manager, he gave me the catalog, he said, look, study this for two weeks. That I can still remember, 4th of January I started. And within that January, month of January, you have to sell four units. And in 1992, each unit was 140,000 rupees. Now, for a hot water system, if 
anybody is going to spend 140,000 rupees at that time, I mean, you can buy probably, I think a vehicle was 200 and 1,000 at that time, because half a vehicle might be dreaming. And I can still remember, on the 31st of January at 6.30 in the evening, I got not four, I got five. I went and spoke to, I'm sure you might be knowing, the customer who helped me out was uh, to get the five, out of the, sorry, three out of the five, was the LP, LPW Java, then I think they were timber mills, they were on Armour Street. So a very nice gentleman. I told him, look, I need to get this. He said, okay, we'll do it next month. I said, no, I need it this month. He said, you know, he said, okay, and you know, maybe the trust that I, the way I he had associated him or maybe I, the way I uh, treated him or the way the professional attitude I had, I, I was very honest with him. He gave me at 6, six o'clock in the evening, I gave him the check. And I told the manager, you wait in office, I'm coming. The office closed at 4.30. And I gave it to him. And that time I realized, yeah, I can do it. And uh, that was one. Then when I came back here, again the same thing. Nobody was bothered about soul at that time. And the, one of the VIPs, the first exhibition I had, they looked at hey, what is this? I said, this is a solar system. For what? You know, electricity, you have hot water. We don't need that. We have enough of oil. And the same VIP, 15 years later, there was an engineer who was with him. Kept my card. My mobile has been the same mobile for the last 22 years. Uh, called me up. Are you still with this? I said, yeah, I will always with that and I will always be with the same, same system. OK, come and install the system. Then when he, when he recalled the incidences, I realized, OK, this was the particular person. I said, what happened? No, now it's changed. No? OK. <laughs> Change, but that time you almost, you know, when he told me that, I thought, okay, I'm doing something wrong here. But uh, yes, I'm proud that maybe I'm just a small triggering point for developing the systems here. I have done that. Uh, the same way I changed certain uh, policies that are being developed now. The same thing with, even with the Sri Lankan. Uh, net metering system that comes up now. I discussed with this with uh, Honorable Karuja Sude when he was Minister of Power and in 1994. Maybe it was not my implementation, but I gave him the documents. I gave him the same document which were uh, implemented in, the, in Germany. The same document. So maybe he used it, maybe he didn't use it, I don't know. But at least I was thinking at that time. So I can be proud that I was thinking of way ahead of things that I That's why I said I always try to do something unique and innovative, which nobody else has thought of. So that's what we, I always try to do. I'm not a scientist, but uh, if you put your mind, you can do. You can do anything. But I always try to do that in terms of development or, so yes, I have done, I'm proud that I have been the pioneer in certain development of certain equipment and it is followed now with some of the projects. Maybe I have not capitalized on it or made millions, it doesn't matter, but the satisfaction is more than enough. So if you ask me, I have installed the first solar system in this country region. I done the first heat recovery system in this region. The now it's been followed. We did the first heat recovery air conditioning system which is in the airport. So yes, those are something that you know when I sit with my uh, engineers who are back in US the factory, I mean they have 29, two of the engineers have 29 papers between them. They are brilliant engineers. Yes, I learned from them. Because they, they 
because if you show even with professor, if any of you all show that you all are keen to learn from him, he is going to take the time to teach you. But it is your duty to check with him. It's your duty to ask him. It may be, it may be, wrong. It may be wrong. It may be the most stupid question that it is there. There is nothing called stupid. There is nothing called foolish question. And I'm sure professor will agree with me. If you ask, that stupid question might have one word which is the triggering point which he will come and teach you. And the same thing I have done. If I give you an example, I did a, I just looked at one product which was there in the, in the system, in the product range. And I said, no, you can modify it. You can do something different. You have one system which can do two purposes. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. And then we sat together, Bruce with the vice president, sat with each other, and then I said, no, you can't do it. Up. Then he looked at me, anyway, we were having a discussion, and then he caught one thing that I told him. He said, look, let me look at it. And today, that is the product that is being marketed in this country. So, and that's been used by the municipalities also, negotiate, uh, discussing to implement that system, the heat recovery system. So like that, there are certain things which, so nothing is stupid, nothing is foolish. You always ask a question. I always say, ask three questions, you'll get, you'll resolve your problem. Spend three more minutes, ask three questions. Nothing more. Three more extra questions and you'll resolve your problem. So that's how I always try to work out. Can I ask? No, no, I don't need. Thank you. Um, so I have actually two questions. Yeah. One is, um, now in Sri Lanka, I know if you see the supply into the grid is even possible, and it seems to be much popular. Yeah. But uh, having you know the, the solar power is 365 days here, literally. Why it does not seems to be so popular in this part of the world? And then second question is, uh, if we are going to buy some solar panels, how to identify a good one? Second one is very important because there are, I'm sorry that, for my language, but I call them monkeys. There are a lot of people who duplicate things just to make a quick buck out of it. You get not only in Sri Lanka, you get it here, you get it everywhere in the world. You get a lot of duplicates. Same way, I'm sure with universities, if you look at the educational system, you get a lot of educational system which say, I always call them monkeys, but I'm not ashamed to say that. Uh, who will say, oh, we do the same degree, same thing. Oh, it's not the same. So anyway, uh, here, see, when you look at solar or uh, in particular solar power, you have to always remember that solar systems, the power generation would have certain parameters for best performance. And the temperatures go higher than 45 degrees or 50 degrees, the efficiency drops drastically. So, in other words, this is a little bit of a downturn here. Of course, you can overcome it by having an extra cooling system and various cooling mechanisms to reduce that heat. Uh, the second here, why it is not getting, I mean, it's getting developed but not as popular as I would say, okay, in Sri Lanka, where they have been installing it in most of the houses. Most of the people here are expatriates. And until recently, most of the residences are rented. So you rent it out today, maybe in two years you have to shift. So I go to carry the whole thing and go back. It's not practical. And most of them are in flats. Uh, the government here is supporting. Unlike I cannot tell you that much about the Sri Lankan government. If they are putting like recently the Abu Dhabi government is putting the biggest solar power plant in the world, which is uh, I think 200 megawatts. That's a huge power plant. The Dubai government has been promoting, Sheikh Mohammed has been promoting it in a big way, not only solar but energy saving in the whole. Uh, the government does it, and individual housing, yes, to a certain extent they are doing it, though you don't see it. Uh, because they are still trying to, um, I mean, you have to understand that when you look at the history of Sri Lanka and uh, UAE, UAE amalgamated in 72, 
So it basically started in 72 in Sri Lanka as a history of 2000 odd years and we claim to have 2000 odd years history. Though we have not done, it, done anything from that long, we are just surviving on the kings and queens things that have been done, developed. Anyway, uh, so the, they are still doing things, the net metering is going to happen here. They are still negotiating, they are doing certain parameters and things like that. It is taking a little time, but it will happen. And here in Dubai, what happens if it happens, it just takes off and it just booms. Whereas in other countries, it's a slow, gradual uh, process. It takes time, but once it happens, it just booms out here. So it is happening here, but not in the big way of Sri Lanka. Yes, the other question is that how you identify the good suppliers. I'm not saying that Chinese are not good. You get good, very good Chinese products. You get very good Korean products. You get very good Taiwan products. You get very bad US, UK, Italian products. Don't go by the manufacturer of the country. It is a little bit difficult to identify because, I mean, most of them now what they do is they just give you a paper which shows beautiful figures. But in reality, the performance is what you have to look at. So always ask for a good product. We'll always have to have a third party test certificate. A good product will always have a third party test certificate. If you look at Apple or Sony, they will have a certificate as per ISO or not ISO, as per BS or UL or some standard which is manufactured and that is certified. Of course, you can't ask Apple, give me the certificate. That's a well known brand. But if it is an unknown brand or uh, such as a mechanical equipment, you'll always have, if you look at air conditioning system, you will always have a test certificate, a third party test certificate. So always try to insist on it. It may not be for that particular model, but you will have a general certificate which will say, for instance, Solar is SRCC from US, Keymark from UK, TUV from Germany, uh, SPF from Switzerland. So that company will be given a certificate saying that the company has is manufacturing according to a certain standard. That should be good enough. <coughs> And they do not give you certificate just for the sake of paying something, no. So always try to ask for third party certificate. Then you and you have to do your own studies. The internet is quite, uh, I mean, well informed. If you type the brands and you, you can find out what, what are the brands from where it comes. And you can go to these companies, these uh, certification agencies and download their certifications as well. You can do it now. So try to do that, otherwise, yeah, you have a problem of, you know, duplicates coming into the market. You cannot stop it. You cannot stop that. So, so that uh, after that, uh, education after kids, they came in to cover the secret behind uh, Nothing. The country. I always say, you cannot find a. I'm going out of the topic, but you cannot. Being out of the country, I'm sure you have been out of the country for a long time, I know you. So yes. you have been out of the country for a long time. More, maybe more than me or people. <coughs> you have to be out of the country to appreciate the values of that country. And there is no other country on earth than Sri Lanka. It's not me who has told, there are so many of my friends, Emiratis who have told me that. There are, there is my uh, former boss, who is now a good friend and partner of me, David Wilton, who is Australian, who actually recruited me and brought me here. He always say, I need to go and have my hoppers and string hoppers in Sri Lanka. He was a guy who was there in, in Ken Balindra's office in John Case in 1992 when the Maradana bomb went off. He said, to help with it, I'm going to do my uh, meeting and then leave. We were there till 9.30 in the evening and then left. Again, he was there in 1993 when the floods were there. When the famous Colombo floods, all the houses were flooded. The chairman's house was also flooded in Colombo 7. But he said, no, I'll wait, do my work and go. So he loves the country. The country is a beautiful country. And uh, the why they came back is, I mean, 
that's why I said I always wanted them to uh, see the roots of Sri Lanka, the benefits of being Sri Lankan or living in Sri Lanka, because they have seen here. They were, two of them were born here. The elder one was eight months, so he was more here than in Sri Lanka. They lived in the U.S. for four years or five years, actually six years, because the elder one stayed back. He was doing another internship till, till the, my second one graduated. They have seen. So it's all how you, how they see a particular country. I'm not saying that Sri Lanka is, uh, yes, Sri Lanka is the best country, but other countries are also good. It all depends on how you will feel comfortable in that country. It's not that they have to go back to Sri Lanka. Yeah. They feel comfortable in US, fine. They feel comfortable here, fine. I feel comfortable working here, that's why I'm here. I always say, if I go back to Sri Lanka and start working, and I'll murder somebody or somebody will murder me, one of the two, because I cannot work with the government. I'm sorry, but I'm going political, but that's what it is. So it all depends on how you feel comfortable. It's all about how you feel comfortable. And my children felt very comfortable going back. They have their friends, they have, they have friends here as well. They have still friends in US. They still call them and they came to two guys came to Sri Lanka to visit them and they were staying with us. But uh, all, I mean, keep everything like Sri Lanka is a beautiful country. There is nothing like that country. It's only the people who ruin the country. When the people, we are also part of it. We ruin the country. Not that the country ruins us. So, I don't know whether that answers your questions. I think uh, I have one question to ask. Now, your children are more or less uh, settled in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Now, what is the business continuity plan that you have, like hand over it to the next generation? Okay, I always, another thing I forgot to mention, that's a very good question because he brought it up. Uh, yes, I have two children, they are mechanical engineers, so they would always want to, I mean, the next step is okay, they can take more business. I told them, when they, were, when they went for graduation, I said, look, can graduate, but don't think that you can come and take over my business, sit on the chair and take over my business. No. You want, you go back to wherever you were, start from the scratch, work for minimum two years at ground level. Then when you come to my company, if you come to if you decide to come to my company, and they know it's very difficult to work with me. Especially being my children, I told them. They know that. That you love to start. With the, you can maybe boss's son, but no. You have to start with the installations, maybe not work as hard as I worked or the amount of time I put. But they would have to learn that, then gradually come up. Not to just come and sit on the chair. The most of the small businesses or most of these family owned businesses make the mistake that they make is they bring the son. The father works so hard and brings it up. And when the son comes, son comes, he doesn't know what the root of the products or what, how it has been developed, he comes sit on that and starts ruining everything. He wants the fast cars, he wants the flashy dresses and everything. And then before you know the company has gone down. And I have seen it. I have seen it. In this country I have seen it. The company I worked with uh, for a brief when I was in Cyprus. Second one. And when I speak to the one of the sons, who is local Emirati, he says, yes, he made mistake. I said, look, you know, because I, as I told you, going back, the people who work for you, if you get honest person, yes, he will work honestly. But if you get somebody who is just passing time, he will make a quick buck and get out of it. And unfortunately, that's what happened with him. There were a lot of people who came, made a quick buck and went off. So I had told them, so to answer your question, I had told them, you want to come? You have to start minimum two years in a company, there it is, it doesn't matter. And then after that, once you know what is the difficulties of the work as working as an employee, then you can come work in my company as an employee, learn the difficulties of the staff, how difficult it is for the installations, the heat, the difficulty, the lies that they say, the, all the all the short, you know, shortcuts they take. And then after that you know, so when you sit there, 
they cannot remote control you can operate it. So that is what I have always said. So I have given them the option and coming back to another, just a deviation from that, I have also from two years ago, I told you there were two guys who were working with me from the beginning and they are still with me. And uh, I have given, I have given a percentage of my company shares to my staff. So end of the year, as a profit share, I mean, it's not only my uh, input, it's their input that they gives me the profit. So I give a percentage to them, as once well they we do the audit reports and the, um, uh, the profits are declared, they give them, I give them a share of it. So uh, they become part of the company as well. So that I always do. So, Depends. Maybe they may come and join. They may say, no, we are not interested. At the moment, I said, look, this is how it has to be done. After two years, if you decide, then let's see. So at the moment, it's, that's what I have been planning to do. What is the next next stage or the next step of uh, Solar Solar Energy? I mean, what is your expansion plan and how you are planning to take the, this organization? Uh, I. As I told you before, I am negotiating with, uh, just now before I came, I had a conference call with one of my principals. Uh, we are negotiating with the, some of the Sri Lankan government uh, entities uh, to do a development there. It's a completely different uh, technology of uh, uh, power generation or whatever. A more environment. I'm always into environmental friendly equipment. Uh, so we are looking at it, and if that happens, then yes, we will take it around the uh, Asian region. We are also looking at discussing with some of an Indian uh, party to do the development as well. Yeah. So that is where I want to go. Into more energy saving. I mean, the PV systems and the these are individualized, you know, the individual has to think for it. But it doesn't make a big impact into the economy or into the uh, environment unless the government does something. So if we are to go into the next step, it has to be to change it into a bigger way, which I hope we should be able to do something with the help of some professors on the Morocco University who have been helping us out. Uh, to develop it. So hopefully within the next couple of months we should have, in fact I have a conference, I just got an email saying that there is a conference in June. So it happened that I am going back to Sri Lanka in June for the holidays and also it just coincided sided with that trip. So, so you are planning to grow globally? Uh, we do. I am sitting here we do projects, we have done projects in Singapore, we have done projects in Malaysia, in Thailand. Uh, from here we have done projects. But yes, this one, it will be a different, uh, different feel, uh, not a feel, but a different uh, step altogether. It will be into a different level of uh, development. I think, uh, sorry. And we are also, some of the local equipment, small equipment which we are having, we are in the process of bring, bringing it semi-finished and uh, doing the uh, finishing of the final production and the commissioning here. So that should be happening by end of the year. I'm just uh, getting the equipment and the material for that to build the products here. So, so we are no more trading cup? <coughs> no, no. I always, I mean, though I was a trading company, I always used to do something innovative with the products. That is why I always combine my products together so that I, I always kept my suppliers, all my suppliers know each other. The guy from US knows the guy from Italy, he knows the guy from Australia, he knows the guy from Germany. And I make sure that once a year they come here, meet together, we have a, you know, um, uh, uh, lunch or whatever and have a brainstorming session where each one, because 
it makes, how I look at it, it makes my life easier. If I can combine all five products together and put something out, I only have to tell uh, the guy from here, Bruce, speak to Luigi and try and sort it out. So they will break their heads and get it. I'm sitting, I put them together, they, it's their problem. They break their heads and they get it. They are the experts of it. So I've always done it. So all my product uh, projects are a combination of all the equipment, which if another supplier has to do that, <coughs> find it very difficult because he can't find five suppliers to put together. So yes, we were a trading company, but in a different way, we used to do something, some unique products. Unique, uh, the finished product is something different from what you get in the market. So now we are trying to do it, manufacture it locally itself, not fully, but at least 25% uh, manufacturing plant to start off with. So that would probably start end of the, end of the year. Thank you very much, Mr. Suresh. I think there might be more questions. Uh, he had some questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same one. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so on behalf of uh, all my batchmates and uh, the doctor, I would like to thank you for taking time to come and share your experience and also to inspire all of us. Um, you have Your story has given us um, like insights into um, how to succeed and not to lose focus. And hopefully we, we wish you all the best that Sri Lanka would be able to make use of your talent and to uh, bring betterment to the country as well. So we're proud of you and uh, want to thank you um, very much. And we'd like to invite you to uh, enjoy a cup of tea with us. So it will give us uh, the other colleagues, if they have more questions, clarifications, they could talk to you. Thank you, thank you very I much. Will say